Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today, I wanted to talk about Club Shay Shay and a Chris Brown quote that I thought was uh, rather interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and get into that. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you want to. In your studio. Yeah. So you come down here like, you know, it's like, and just crank out songs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a point, it was a point where I, I used to stay in the studio. Like when I was doing a lot of my earlier albums, I had to learn. But but around I want to say around the Fame album and certain stuff like that I was kind of like in my in my zone I knew how yeah. I knew what yeah. I wanted. Okay, using your bag. Yeah. So so even for me now I put the studio in my house because like I can draw inspiration faster. Like if right. I think of something, if I think of an idea, like oh I got an idea for this song, I don't have to like wait or set up the studio and be like okay I gotta go right. to the studio now. So if you're in your bed at night and you think of something, you just come down here and just. Yeah, uh, depends, because I'll make sure my engineer is awake. You know, right. like, if it's like 5, 6 in the morning, I'm like, man, I'll just do it in the morning. Right. But like, if it's maybe if it's midnight, I'm like, hey, man, you up? Let's, let's, let's do it. Wow. So, so before we continue, the, what they're talking about at this point, they're talking about how Chris Brown says that he has, as you can see in the top left corner, Chris Brown has 15,000 unreleased songs. Okay. And I know some people, uh, because when Lil Wayne said something similar to this, when he said he has thousands of th same thing with juice world when they said juice world had three thousand unreleased songs some people think that's impossible and they're like why t Payne talked about this in an interview as well like he has so many songs that you'll never hear and i think it's important for us to hear why these artists do this stuff why they have so many songs that you'll never hear it's not that every song is gonna is top notch they're not saying i have fifteen thousand songs that would go number one they start saying i have 15 songs that are just unreleased and i think chris brown does a great job of explaining why he does this. So, 18,000 unreleased songs. Um, <laughs> what, I mean, how do you, how do you get to 18, how do you get to like 100, or okay, if somebody said, well, you know, I got like 20, I got 50 unreleased songs. Yeah. But you say like in some of your apps you have 1,800. Yeah. So you just like, like go days, months, years, where you just record. Yeah, I, I, I literally recorded like four songs yesterday. But I did like, I do it in spurts. So sometimes, some days I'll just relax. I might do one song, but then but some days it's just like we just, because I feel like uh, it's like sharpening your sword, man. Mm -hmm. Like being better at your craft, like shooting jump, getting your jump shots up. Right. Like I feel like I don't want to be complacent and, yes. and, and, and thinking I'm, I got it all figured out. Right. I never want to think that, I, oh yeah, right. I'm Chris Brown, so whatever I put out is going to be great. I want to make sure it is, you know? Are there any songs that you wrote for an artist that it's that? Is what I want to talk about today. Okay. So, and it's, guys, I got to apologize one more time. Most of, I have two cameras. So the one you're seeing when I have that small screen up, this camera's over here. But I always look at this camera. So sometimes if you see me talking and when I'm in this, when I'm in this mode here, it, it may look like I'm looking to the side because I'm looking at the camera in front of me instead of this camera right here. So I apologize for that. I'm trying to work on that, but I know it looks weird sometimes. But let's get back to the subject at hand. You know, I don't think it's any different than a boxer saying, man, there's, I have 100,000 punches that never touched anybody, right? I have, I've thrown 10,000 punches that, that only hit a bag. I've thrown 10,000 punches that were just air, right? You know people who train for ultra marathons and people who train for marathons and 5Ks? You know how many miles they run, right? If you, if you run a marathon, you don't run that 126 mile. I know they got weird videos out there like, I didn't train at all and ran 26 miles. I get it. But people who actually train to run a 26, uh, to run 26 miles, they run hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles, especially people who are trying to get to like the big marathons, like the New York Marathon and the Boston Marathon and stuff like that. People who are training to get to those places, they have to run hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles to get to even just run that 26 miles. When you see a sprinter in track, right? You think that that 100 meter dash, that's, that's all they've done up to this point? No, they've ran over and over and did all this training, did all this stuff, all these steps, all this rhythm, all this stuff to just run for that nine seconds. Yeah, you see nine seconds right there, but they have put in months, years to get to this point. Think about it. From Olympic to Olympic, there's four years apart. You have to obviously have to qualify for the Olympics. So think about all the training that leads up to getting all the way to the Olympics to run that one race or two, if you do more than that, to run 100 meters and for nine, nine to 10 seconds, right? That's what you train for, for four years. 
So why would it be any different for an artist? Of course, you're going to see a album of 12 songs, 13 songs, 15 songs. That doesn't mean they didn't make 100, 200, 300 songs to get to that album, right? It's like he said, it's training your sword, right? You guys, now I can relate this back for us people who make YouTube videos. Um, for people like we just watched in another video, the upper echelon guy. If you watch Think Before You Sleep, if you watch Turkey Tom, the researches that go into that, right? Yeah, you're seeing an hour long video, but they could have put in easily 50, 60, 70 hours of work to get to that one video to make sure everything was right, right? So imagine 60 hours for every one video you put out, right? So think about that. So if you have two, 300 videos on your channel and you have to do 60 hours for each one of those videos, how many hours have been put in to make this one video? It's the same thing with making music. It's hours and hours and hours of making the same songs. That way, when the moment comes, that nine to 10 seconds in a 100 meter race, you're ready. You've trained a long time for this. Some musical artists do do this same thing. They take it that seriously. They'll record song after song that never gets put out there, and they still do it. Y'all know Juice World was very famous for freestyling all the time. He was able to make so many songs because he freestyled all the time. He just did it, right? And it's so he does it so much that when you hear him freestyle, obviously we can't hear him anymore, but I'm talking about when these videos pop up of him freestyling, it's, like, it's almost like it's a second language to him. And it, NLE Chopper said that. It sounds like a second language, and it does, right? So back to the YouTube thing again. For us people who make, who are more like pundits like myself, we make three or four videos, or you got like your, you know, you like your Matt Walsh's, Brett Cooper's, Candace Owens, your Tim, um, Tim Pools, those kind of guys, right? Those people who make tons of subjects, people who do radio shows, those do t tons of subjects in one day. Your first takes, your undisputed, you may have 10 topics, so imagine that, you know what I'm saying? You have to put in a lot of work to make it come out the way it does. I make a ton of videos at this moment. I think I make somewhere between 80 to 100 videos a month, right? But that's because it's that important to me. And there is stuff that I, when I do the live streaming and all that, I make tons. I do a ton of talking that you guys never see. Even when I'm not live streaming, some of the times the reason I make videos is because I'm watching videos and I start talking to myself. I start thinking, man, you know what's so crazy about that? You know, it's wild that that would happen. And the more I feel myself getting riled up or getting passionate or really want to talk about it, that's what normally gets me into making a video. When I'm not making a video right here, outside of these hour long live streams or a 15 minute video, a 20 minute video you may see, when the second I wake up, I start watching videos. Be, right after I get done with this, I go right into getting my thumbnails, right into getting the editing and make sure the volume is okay. And then I go right after that, I'll go right back into about four or five hours of just finding videos to talk about the next day. So you're talking about I'm putting at least six, seven hours into just making this one hour live stream. That's the thing I'm talking about. It just, you want to keep getting better at your craft. You want to keep getting better at talking. I, I try to talk to myself sometimes, and I, sometimes I look back at my videos, sometimes I don't, but I'm listening to myself even while I'm talking. I'm like, man, am I, am I doing good here? Am I not doing good here? Oh, I wish I would have said that. Let me do better about that. And that's why I started turning up the volumes in my videos. I start, I, I got another camera instead of using the webcam I was because y'all y'all saw me complain about how bad the exposure was. But that happens over time. It happens over time. Some people think that just because you're gifted, and I would say that I'm a gifted speaker because it comes easier to me and I know how to talk a lot, doesn't mean I put in any work, that I just hop on this camera and I just start talking. No, man, I've been doing this for years. I've been making videos since I was a kid, and I'm still not the greatest, but I've been making videos since I was at least 12, 11, 12, 13. I've been making videos, right? And so I've gotten used to being in front of a camera. I really dedicated myself at 19 to 20. I really started making a lot of videos, and then I went into the workforce so that kind of died and then I came back right all I'm saying is this took time to get here it takes time to get better at these crafts it takes time to get used to talking to a camera if you put me in front of a live if you were to give me somebody who wants to collaborate with me right and they put me on a live stream with them you don't think I'll be able to handle it yes because I've been doing this for a while now even though I am gifted, it does take some skill, it does take some talent, and it does take some hard work to get used to doing this over and over and researching videos and learning where the clips are and uh, learning what you want to say. And it takes a lot of mistakes. 
See, you see how much I'm talking about this? We just watched what a 30 second, 45 second clip. And here I am still talking. And it's been 10 minutes. That's what I'm talking about. It just takes time. It just takes passion to do this stuff. Let me say this as well. That is why, and I've talked about this before. That is why, even if I don't like somebody, I don't, unless they're doing something I, th I find completely evil, right? Outside of that, when I see people doing stuff, even if I don't like them, I don't knock the hustle. I'm serious. Even if, because sometimes it's just a disagreement. I don't agree with what their philosophy is. They don't agree with mine, but they're not hurting anybody intentionally, right? But when I see people doing this stuff, like I see the Chris Browns, I see the Shannon Sharps, the Skip Baylesses, the Stephen A's, the, um, the even uh, uh, Think Before You Sleeps in the World, the, Tom, the Turkey Toms. All these people, even the Hodge twins, and I don't necessarily like them that much. I watch their videos just to see what they say about stuff, but I don't really like them. Even them, putting out videos every single day for 10 years, that's something, or close to every day for 10 years, that's something I can respect. The same thing with Beast Mode Jones, working out every day, having such a great physique. I see some of these bodybuilders. I know some people hate that some of them take drugs, but not all of them do. I still respect that. Even if they're getting on there and they're trying to tell you how to get women, and I disagree with that, I can't knock that they're still in great shape. I can't knock that they still put in the work every day. I just love watching that stuff. So that's why I watch people I don't even like, just to see the hustle. Because it gets me going. It's like, man, if they're putting in that much work, why can't I put in that much work? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Anyway, watching Chris Brown just inspired me more to be like, why not? Why not keep going? Why not put out as many videos, not just useless videos, but put out videos every single day, five days a week. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Put out videos five days a week, every week until I feel like taking a break, which may not come until the holidays. Maybe. You know what I mean? But why not do this for the next two or three years? Build up a catalog of a thousand videos. That way I have something to look back on. I think that stuff's important and I love it anyway, but it's just like, why not keep doing your craft? Even when you're not feeling it, you still do it. That way you just learn to make it second nature to you. Anyway, just like now, I don't want to quit talking, but I need to shut up. So y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Do y'all put in these kind of hours in your craft, whether that's drawing, whether that's running a business, if you're, if you do gardening, uh, working at McDonald's, do you try to put in more to learn about the burgers, the ingredients? I know that sounds silly, but do you take stuff that seriously? Because that's what separates the good from the great. It really does. That really what separates the bad and mediocre from the great. So y'all let me know what y'all think. I'm gone.